Zaporizhia. Now for more on nuclear safety and what's happening at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, let me turn to Professor uh, Najmedin Meshkati. He's an expert in environmental and industrial engineering at the University of Southern California and has inspected nuclear power plants around the world. Professor, uh, welcome to the program. Uh, a lot of concerns about safety at Zaporizhia um, a nuclear power plant. Uh, UN Secretary General issued a statement earlier saying, regrettably, instead of de-escalation over the past several days, there have been reports of further uh, deeply worrying incidents that could, if they continue, lead to disaster. And Rafael Grossi from IAEA says the situation is completely out of control. What do you make of it? How worried should we be? Thank you, Ms. Tamdar. As you said uh, also earlier, as we speak, there is a UN Security Council meeting started in New York, and Director General of IAEA, uh, Mr. Rafael Grossi, is addressing that meeting about this uh, uh, simmering and brewing uh, catastrophe at Zaporizhia nuclear plant. As your uh, reporters mentioned, there is a uh, a reported shelling. There was shelling on Saturday, on Sunday, and also as of uh, yesterday over there. The, the issue is this at Zaporizhia nuclear plant. It has six reactors. Two of them are uh, operational. The others are shut down. And then, of course, a lot of spent fuel pool, which is not under the containment zone. If we lose offside power to these reactors, and off-site power pool, then we are totally dependent on emergency diesel generators for cooling them, which badly needed. Just remember the case of Fukushima, when we lost the uh, uh, electricity and we had the station blackout. This is unfortunately can happen over there. So what needs to happen to stop a disaster at this point at Zaporizhia? I mean, obviously, the UN Secretary General is calling on on the Russians and the Ukrainians to just stop hostilities around this plant. But let's say there is an explosion, what would that mean? If that explosion, unfortunately, is at the spent fuel pool that it's not under the containment dome, then the radiation could get released to the environment. And this is exactly the problem that we have, that we don't know what is the amount of the spent fuel pool, and if we cut off the electricity to that, and then there is explosion, that uh, radiation fallout could spread all over. There is also a more serious issue, in my humble judgment, based on my uh, last 40 years of experience in nuclear safety. If there is no even an explosion, these operators, these Ukrainian operators who are operating this plan, they are under tremendous psychological stress. And a simple situation that could lead to human error and the propagation of the error, that also can lead to catastrophe. We don't need to have an explosion to cause the problem. This present situation is a pressure cooker for the poor operators. I'm not an expert. You are. So I'm going to pose a question to you, and apologies if it just sounds very basic. But is there a way to just shut down this plant altogether? Uh, no, that was actually a good question, Ms. Namda. Yes, you can shut down the plant today, as when an earthquake happens, it automatically shuts down. It's called scram. However, even after you shut down a nuclear reactor, you need to have continuous cooling to take away the residual heat. Otherwise, the reactor will melt down. The same thing about the spent fuel pool. Even if you shut down the reactor, you need to babysit the spent fuel pool by constant cooling to cool it down. And you've traveled to Chernobyl. You've seen the Fukushima power plant. How is this one different or similar to these? Uh, they, uh, in the case of uh, Chernobyl, the reactor uncovered, there was an explosion in the reactor. In the case of Fukushima, of course, we had the station blackout. Unfortunately, this situation can have both of those characteristics and conditions. If we lose power, we will have a station blackout. If some of this uh, stray 
missile and rockets, they hit the uh, containment dome and they penetrate that and uh, breach the integrity of the containment dome and reactor vessel, it could uh, release radiation at the reactor level. That's why I say that this is a very dire situation. I'm glad that there is this UN Security Council meeting. But again, in my judgment, this situation needs much more urgent intervention by UN Security Council, maybe by empowering a special commission and appointing a very credible, internationally credible person like Dr. Hans Blix, the legendary director general of IAEA, to lead this thing because he has credibility with Russia. He has credibility with Ukraine. I think he is the man that world can count on rescuing the world. All right. We'll have to leave it there, Professor uh, Najmedin Meshkati. We certainly appreciate your take on this. Thank you, Ms. Damdar.